Hello everyone. So in the previous lecture, we have discussed that uh, to fix this whole violation within the FF5 and FF6, we will not recommend to touch any buffer near to the clock pin. So like uh, we will not remove this particular buffer and we will not add any buffer near to the clock pin. So it was recommended that we will remove the buffer from the common path. And we know, uh, and we, uh, we also discussed that what is the reason of that because uh, this common buffer is not going to affect the next stage or the previous stage. As such, this statement is correct, but in the real design, there this statement is not correct. There are a lot of complexities there. So let's move to the next complexity. Let's take about uh, this particular scenario. So you can see that I have just added one more timing path that is between the FF7 and FF8. And now there is a no common path between FF7 and FF8. Common path in the sense there is no common clock path between the FF7 and FF8, only there is only this path. Now if you will make any changes in the clock path this or this so that means clock underscore s to the clock 7 or clock underscore s to the clock 8 if you make any changes in these two paths it is going to affect our setup or hold violation between the ff7 and ff8 or i or i will say that it will it is going to affect our timing path this particular time so like as we discussed uh, previously or you can say in the starting of this lecture that to fix the whole variation between the FF5 and FF6 we will remove the buffer 1. So that means if you will remove the buffer 1 well, what is going to happen with the skew between these two it is going to increase. And now we know very well that if the skew will increase there are chances of whole variation or you can say that chances of whole variation increases. Now let's move to the more complex circuit so i just increase the complexity of the circuit and now you can see that between the ff2 and ff6 there is a one more timing path between ff6 and ff3 there is a one more timing path so that means if you will make any changes between the clock s and the clock 2 or clock underscore s2 clock 6 if you will make any change in this particular path it is going to affect our timing path between ff2 and ff6 Similarly, if you are going to make any change in clock underscore s to clock 3 uh, or clock underscore s to clock 6, it is going to affect our timing path between the FF6 and FF6. So, let's take the example of the previous case itself, the previous lecture where we just mentioned that to fix the whole variation, we will remove this particular buffer. Now, this particular buffer, if we will remove this particular buffer, what will happen with this particular timing path? The timing path with the skew between the ff2 and ff6 that is again going to decrease but the skew between ff6 and ff3 the skew for the clock within the ff6 and ff3 it is going to increase i think i am not supposed to repeat once again that if you will decrease the skew chances of setup violation increases and if you will increase the skew chances of hold violation increases so now you may be thinking that it's not an easy job to fix the setup or hold violation if we are going to touch the skew or you can say if you want to fix just with the help of the clock skew if you want to remove some buffer from the clock network and if you are thinking that you can fix the hold violation or the setup violation it's not that easy and that's the reason I mentioned in the previous lecture that this is not the recommended way but if I'm saying it's not a recommended way there is a catch behind that. My recommendation is only related to the when setup and whole violation is less in numbers. So if I am saying less in number in the sense there should be like in a 20 or the 40 or 80 or something like that then a double digit. If the violations are in that particular range then we are not supposed to touch our clock network that is highly recommended. But if the numbers are big then we have to find out that what is the common problem. So if I am saying that in your network there are 10,000 of uh, violations and if I will ask you just to fix each and every violation one by one, it is a very te tedious job. So what usually you will do, you will just try to figure out the root cause of that and sometime I would say that this skew management, clock skew balancing or the skew management, this is one of that method where we just try to figure out whether if we will remove any particular buffer whether it will fix or not a number of violations or not. so we will discuss about this thing in the next lecture with a specific example in a more detail that how if we will make any changes in a particular area then how it is going to fix three or four violations or more than that in a single
But I think you got my point that if you have less number of violations, there are always challenges and it is not recommended. Thank you.